Hello, thanks for joining me. Today I am going to be making, take a guess, well, if you saw the bottom of my, the title of this video, you would know, is butternut squash. There are two things that I crave in the winter, hot chocolate and soup, right? And the other day, um, my neighbor, I could smell, she was making, but he or she was making butternut squash and I could smell the aroma of it seeping through the door. So as I was walking down the hallway, so like ever since then I've been craving butternut squash. So I found this recipe on I think it's cooking.newyorktime.com. I'll put the name at the bottom along with the recipe. And so I got this recipe. I'm going to try it today. One thing about me and recipes, I don't always follow it exactly like I should. I kind of sometimes tweak things or add more or less than what they suggest. So I'm going to make it my way and I'll also have the actual recipe at the bottom in case you want to make it exactly like, the, like their way. And so with that being said, I'm going to review all of the ingredients, or most of them are probably, oh no, I just spilled the olive oil. Oops. Um, I'm going to show you most of the ingredients and then we will begin. All right, as you can see, I pre-sliced and portioned out the recipe needed for the the ingredients needed for the recipe. I have asked for either three tablespoons of butter or three tablespoons of oil. I did two tablespoons of butter and one of oil. Um, I mixed all the seasoning here that they required. You have over here the ginger, the garlic, one clove of garlic, the onion is slightly under one onion. I had to use half a portion of it to make um, dinner last night, so it's not a whole onion, but we're gonna work with what we got. I'm gonna store it off with three cups of um, vegetable oil, vegetable stock, it asked for five. I'm gonna see how three does for me. It also recommended uh, two, it asked for a whole butternut squash sliced up about two pounds worth. I bought this because I don't enjoy cutting up butternut squash. If you've ever done it, it's so tedious. So I just got it pre-sliced to make my life a little easier because I don't have time to slice it up. So it says it's one pound worth, but we're just gonna go with it because it looks like it can be a large butternut squash equivalent so we'll see what happens have um raw cashew over here a cup worth of that and um, that's some of the ingredients we're going to begin and we will see what happens oh okay so it says i'm gonna put the two tablespoons of vegan butter in there, one tablespoon of olive oil. They say to have it under medium heat, so in a big um, pot, so that's what we're doing. Then from there, they say to add the onions. So here comes the onions. Okay, that's all the onion I have to provide. I'm going to mix it all up. Okay, the recipe says to have it cook for five minutes and then add the cashew and cook that and stir it in till the onion becomes translucent. So we're going to stir. It says to wait for five minutes, but I'm going to add the cashew now so it can absorb the flavor 
of the onion while it's cooking instead of waiting till it's translucent. So that's what I'll do. Here comes the cup of raw cashew. Going to mix that together. And I'm gonna let that cook for five minutes. Stirring it up. Look at that. This is cooking well, huh? All right, there's two minutes left before I add any other items, but I'm going to add the garlic, although they said to wait for the full five minutes. I kind of want the, the garlic to participate in this absorption of flavor and not wait for the full five minutes. So I'm going to add, as you can see, the you can see that the cashew is getting brown, which they say, you want to cook it till it starts to get brown. So, I have one minute left. Now, 49 seconds. Perfect timing. Oh, yeah. I'm going to cook the garlic into it, and then I'm going to add the rest of the ingredients. All right. I have about 37 seconds left. Since they're getting browned, I'm not going to wait for the full 29 seconds to add the rest of the stuff, so I'm just gonna add it now. Cause it looks pretty good as it is. Whoops, gotta fix that. Okay, so I'm going to now add the vegetable broth and the spices to this. I'm adding three cups worth of vegetable broth. It asks for five, but because, oh, that's my timer saying to add the other stuff right ahead of your timer. Okay, so I added the vegetable broth stock or broth, whichever, and I'm also going to add the spices. This is the spice concoction, the turmeric, coriander, curry, um, cumin. I think that's all of them. If I'm missing something, then just check the ingredients and you'll see all the uh, spices. Okay, from there, I'm going to now add the ginger. Oh my gosh, I love ginger. With this ginger, they ask for two, two tablespoons worth. I have about one and a half instead of two. because I didn't, I felt like, you know, I cut into pretty big chunks to set to mince it, and I felt that one and a half should be plenty. But if you like to follow rules, you put two tablespoons worth. Okay, and now I'm going to add the butternut squash. Here it goes. Okay, butternut squash is added. I'm going to mix that in. Okay, looking at it, I feel like adding the additional, no, I'm gonna add one cup. See how that looks, one additional cup. No, I'm gonna add the rest, actually. The recipe asks for five cups. Um, and after putting the butternut squash in here, I think adding the additional two cups would work. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm gonna add the remaining two cups of broth um, with my one pound of butternut squash <clears throat> and go from there. All right, let's see here. So this box only had only one and a half left in there. So we're just gonna do one and a half cup and just go with it. Okay, so instead of five cups of 
vegetable broth. I'm doing four and a half because this container here only provided four and a half worth. So that's what we're gonna go with. Now the recipe says you add salt and pepper um, to your liking. So just add as much, not as much, cause you don't want it to be super high in sodium. So you're just going to play around with the salt and pepper and see um, how it tastes and then go from there, okay? So that's what I'm about to do and we'll see what the next step is. Oh, all right, so I just added one teaspoon of salt into this and did the taste test and it tasted really well with the one teaspoon. So that's an option if you wanna put one teaspoon of salt in there uh, and I just sprinkle in some pepper. Then now it says in the recipe that you bring the soup to a simmer, reduce the heat to low, cover the pot, and cook the soup until the squash is easily pierced with a knife, 20 to 25 minutes, okay? All right, so I guess that's what I'm about to do right now. I'm gonna set my timer for 20 minutes to check it, and then if it still needs cooking, I'll add the additional 25, additional five. Okay, so that's done. I'm just going to let this get into a simmer, and then I'm gonna cover it up, and then we'll figure out what the next step is. I think the next step is to put this all in a blender. So that's what we're gonna prepare for. This butter nut squash soup. Okay, I'm gonna put the cover on and see what we're gonna do next. All right, I'm going to check on, there's about five minutes left. I'm gonna check on the butternut squash, do the fork test and see if it's soft. And look, it goes, it goes straight through the fork. So it's definitely ready. So 25 minutes is definitely too long. Even 20 minutes is too long for my dish. So it looks like 15 minutes did the trick. So I would suggest that you check your butternut squash 15 minutes into it. And um, if, it feels, if it's cooked, then you, can, you don't have to cook it for the whole 20 to 25 minutes so it doesn't get too soggy. So... I'm going to turn it off. Right now it's cooking on low. I'm going to turn it off. Uh, the recipe says now that I have to let it sit for 15 minutes. So guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to set my timer for 15 minutes. Let it sit and cool off before I set the timer. Let it um, sit and cool off before the blending process begins. So that's what I'm going to do. And we're going to do the following step afterwards. Oh my gosh, I've been snacking on different things around the house while making this dish because it's taking forever. <laughs> oh my goodness. So uh, if you're gonna make a dish like this, make sure it's not after a long day of work, okay? make it a weekend thing because it's, I started I think at 6 and it's almost 8 o'clock yeah okay with that being said let's carry on adding the I'm gonna take this and bring it really close just dropping it all in there still in here. I, I try to take as much as the sweet potato, not sweet potato, butternut squash, cashew, 
and onion as much as that as possible. But the liquid itself, I left about, you can't see at this angle, but I left about a, pour it in here. and a half worth of it. I'm going to place it in here just because I'm going to see what the consistency is as with the, this not in it, you know, and after blending it, if I feel it can use a little more, I'll add more, but I kind of want it kind of thick, not too liquidy or watery. So I'm kind of playing it by ear, messing around with it and seeing what happens, okay? So again, I poured all the uh, butternut squash, onion squash in there. Most of the water or broth and stuff is in here. I left out about a cup to a cup and a half of it out to kind of play with the consistency and then I'll either add more of this or not. Okay, oop, I forgot the top. All right, it's time to blend. Oop, wow. It's not making it out. messy oops you know what every time I make soup or stew okay this is the current consistency now right kind of looks like baby food I'm gonna do a taste test let me taste it real quick mmm not bad. Okay. Now, I think I blended enough. Didn't require that much blending. Okay. I definitely think one pound of butter and squash is plenty. I don't know what they were talking about when they said to put two pounds worth because that would have been too much. I'm so glad that I followed my gut per usual and did one pound worth of this. Um, and... I'm also glad I followed my gut and didn't use the whole, um, and I used the rest of the, of the, um, broth mixture, right? Because I like the thickness and the consistency that it is right now, which is more baby food consistency, okay? Now what I'm going to do is, mm, I'm so hungry, I'm kind of eating it now. Don't judge me. It's good. Don't judge me, people. Okay. Now, I'm going to pour everything. Ooh, it's good. You can really taste the um, the ginger. Oh, yeah. I'm excited. Okay. So, I'm going to take the mixture. I'm going to place it back in the pot. And I'm going to add the coconut milk. And then, I'm going to let that cook. They say 15 to 20 minutes, but listen here, I am hungry and I don't have time to wait for 20 minutes. So we're gonna check in at about eight to 10 minutes. That's what I'm gonna, that's what I'm gonna do, okay. All right. Wow, my hands are so messy. <laughs> okay. All right, like I said, I made a mess, so please ignore a mess. Okay, I'm going to now pour the banana squash, squash concoction in here. Ooh -wee. Yummy. It looks so good. I don't want any of it to go to waste, so I'm trying to get as much of it as possible. Okay. Looks pretty empty to me, right? Okay. Now, oh, it's bubbling. It's bubbling like crazy. I'm going to lower the heat. Put it on low. 
Then I'm going to add the spoonful, not spoonful, cupful of coconut milk. Whoa, this thing is popping like crazy. I'm gonna put it on low because, okay. Now I'm going to mix it all together like so. Oh, it looks so pretty. Looks so pretty. Mmm. Okay, perfect. Okay, I'm gonna let this cook on low for. I'm gonna do 10 minutes. Alright, so it's been 10 minutes and um, it's ready. Uh, I sprinkled a little bit of salt to it. I added just a few drops of salt for flavor. And now I'm about to taste it. Moment of truth. doesn't taste bad it tastes okay so okay so this is the recipe and this is I don't know if you can see it clearly oops there it is so this is the recipe in the website that um, I found it in okay and so the only thing I, th I did differently then the actual recipe is I put two and a half cups of vegetable broth instead of five. I mean, I put four and a half cups of vegetable broth instead of five. I've had one pound of butternut squash instead of two pounds. And I, what else? Score, uh, the ginger, I put two and a half tablespoons instead of two tablespoons of minced ginger. I didn't add the, it wanted me to add something and I didn't add it because I forgot to buy it. And rosemary, one spring of fresh rosemary, it asked for that. I didn't do it because I forgot to add it and I figured it's just rosemary. Um, and when blending, I removed this much worth of the liquid when blending it. Um, so those are the only changes that I've made. I have to say, tasting it before I added the coconut milk and after, I kind of prefer it without the coconut milk. I think the coconut milk was pretty, was overpowering and that's really what you taste um, now, as opposed to tasting, still tastes fine. It just doesn't have the flavor I was wanting, you know? So, I'm still gonna have it for dinner and I'm still going to enjoy it. It's a lot in here. It's probably enough for like three days. But yeah, just give it a try and see how it turned out for you and how you liked it and hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful be sure to hit subscribe button